first time I've been described as one of the most creative people in the country, but that's, that's a hard one to live up to. Um, well, it's a pleasure to be here, obviously. Um, great to have reached this milestone in the Harness and Creativity program. I'm here on behalf of myself and Leo Scarf, who's over there, and um, all the Woods, who are the two other facilitators of the Creative Labs, um, Leo and Neutrum, and all uh, over in OMA. Um, Ola can't be with us, she's in London, so I'm speaking on behalf of the three of us really, but some of the opinions I might share to begin with, uh, I have to say, would be my own, just in case I say something that uh, might not fit with, with others, because I want to do two things. I want to just set the scene a little bit as to why we came up with the idea of Creative Labs in the first place, why we think they're significant um, as, a, as a part of the bigger picture, as it were, and then, having set that scene as to what, what the significance is of them, just to talk a bit about the process, how we approach the labs, uh, and what came out as, at the other end. Um, so I'll start by setting the context. Um, I think I have to wave or something, do I, to change the slide? Because I don't have a thing here. So there we go. Um, the context, we started, uh, I was involved right from the start with writing the application for this program, and obviously at the time, we were right in the teeth of an economic recession, everything had sort of fallen apart. Um, we'd been in a situation, an economy which was over-aspirational perhaps. Uh, everybody got rather carried away and the wheels fell off. Um, so we were stuck with a, an economy which wasn't working and everybody was in a pretty dire situation and we thought, how can we uh, use this program to try and inject some new vision, some new energy into the, the local economy? So that's one of the things that was informing us. In the bigger picture, obviously, apart from austerity, once we've gone over all the austerity measures, uh, innovation is the thing that everybody says we need in order to get out of this economic situation and achieve economic growth again. Um, and so there's a lot of talk about innovation, but again, change the slide. Um, there's a tendency for that talk to be highly associated with high-end technologies and research and development and science and universities doing highly specialized things, um, which makes it quite restricted in a way as, a, as an idea that a lot of people don't feel they can become involved with. So we really need to see how innovation can apply to anyone, anywhere, um, and broaden that out, and encourage people as a whole to feel they have the permission, if you like, the right to be creative, to think differently, to do things differently, to take a few chances. And that starts by adding the word creativity to innovation and actually understanding what that looks like, or what creativity would be like. Um, on top of that though, it's not just a, a, a matter of putting the wheels back on the economy as it were. I think a number of us would be aware that the economic model that we've been using to date is flawed, it's faulty. Uh, and although all the rhetoric is about economic growth, the reality is we can't have economic growth on a finite planet with finite resources. And I think that message is just gradually beginning to seep in. It's not one people want to hear, but it's a reality. Um, I saw a statistic recently that we're going to see three billion more middle-class people by 2020. So not just the population growing, but the expectations, the standards of living increasing. And yet we're running out of minerals, we're running out of energy, um, the environment is kicking back. Uh, we have to be thinking differently, not only about um, new products and services, but how the economy itself actually works. Um, can I have uh, the next slide as well, please? Um, so, you know, there's some good and interesting new approaches taking shape out there that we need to be aware of and grabbing hold of and promoting alongside all the high-tech stuff. Things like urban agriculture up on the top left-hand corner there um, is, a, is really starting to get into its own. Um, there's a, an initiative down in Dublin, an urban farm on top of a roof which is planned, and there's some really interesting schemes taking place across the UK and Europe where food is being grown in cities, which is ironic, really. You talk to farmers and say, look at what's going on. People are actually starting to grow their own food because they don't like the way food is being produced um, for them. Um, the maker community, as it were, people reconnecting with making things is also a big trend. And if I can just change the slide again, um, and there's a shift towards looking for more empathy uh, and connection and authenticity uh, in the economy as a whole, uh, and more collaboration, more community-based approaches uh, in order to be successful. So the, the environment, if you like, for the economy is, is shifting. 
And so and what is this showing us? It's not just um, that we have to do things on a high-tech basis, of course those have their place, but also what energy can be released if we extend innovation and creativity out into the community and into the smaller businesses and the smaller practices and help people to get together and work on new projects. We can see a lot of exciting things start to happen. Um, so what can happen if individuals and small businesses are involved, if we look at the social economy as well as the knowledge economy as our source of regrowth? Um, what can happen if we look at models and ways of working that include more sharing and collaboration? Um, new term, the circular economy, starting to make its way into the lexicon. Um, uh, so that's another economy that we can be thinking about. And what can happen if we can show compelling visions to people as a whole as to what's possible, what the alternatives might be, so that we can actually start to work towards those with confidence. Okay, so those are some of the things in the background that are informing our approach to the creative labs. And the other key part of the equation, obviously, is can art and design and the creative sector, in a way, come to the rescue of the economy? We hear talk of the creative economy, but what does that actually mean? And I think there's a new slide to move on to now. Yeah, um, there are increasing um, signs that creativity and creative people are being valued in the economy alongside our research and development folk. Uh, the place of culture and creative activity in regional development is gradually moving up the agenda. Even here now with this program, which was funded under Interreg, we begin to see how the Interreg program has recognized that creativity isn't just about tourism and crafts, it's also about helping the economy as a whole, actually expanding what we mean by a knowledge economy, how that value is added. Um, and the DCI's innovation strategy that's out for consultation at the minute actually has a few paragraphs on creativity for the first time. It talks about a creative framework for Northern Ireland. So there's interesting little doors starting to open that we can help to push a bit further open. And the Harnessing Creativity program itself was, was looking at the fact that there was this gap between the creative sector on the one hand and the wider economy on the other, and the way that those work together in discovering how value can be added um, and what value can be added. Um, so let's look at that. So all of these things were sort of feeding into the design of the Harnessing Creativity program as a whole and the Creative Labs in particular as a place where this sort of thing could be demonstrated. What happens if you start to help people collaborate and start from scratch with new ideas? And I'll talk about that in a minute. I just wanted to add another quick slide. Um, yeah, a couple of quotes that I think are really highly appropriate. And I can't see them and I didn't write them down, but they're up there. Um, it's this idea of how creativity isn't just about you know, good design of a product, it's also about how we can enhance people's perceptions um, and their ability to see possibilities and to start to think differently. Because one of the problems we've stuck with in our economic model, as it were, is that we've been doing this for so long, we've kind of got into a habit, this is the way the economy works, this is the way business works, and we need to break out of that, we need to disrupt it a little bit. So enhancing the ability to think differently is as important as any other skill or educational qualification um, that we can give people. Okay, uh, next slide. So with that um, small task of helping to change the entire economy, um, we move to the creative labs themselves. A small contribution to that, that thinking. Um, there should be another slide next which shows you roughly where <coughs> You might have to keep pressing. No, no, that's interesting. Okay, okay, it doesn't show you anything about where the creative labs fit into the bigger picture. Is it possible to go backwards? One more? No? No, forward one? No, forward, forward? Yeah, no, all right. Right, okay. this is why I'm disempowered. I can't control anything. Um, there is an imaginary picture which requires creative thinking <laughs> in which somewhere are creative labs and you have to work out where. Um, along the top are master classes, this is all part of the program which are looking at specialised areas. Um, I'm not talking about those. Along the bottom are business workshops helping to enhance business uh, capabilities. And in the middle would be a line showing the creative labs leading to the showcase that we have going on right now. 
Um, it's the creative labs which have helped to generate the concepts that you can see uh, showcased upstairs. And those concepts in turn will go on into a further phase of development work to help bring them as close as we can to actual practical things happening on the ground. Um, and if I don't get a chance to say it at the end because I end up rushing, just make sure if you go up there, look at how you could engage with those concepts and take them further because they're offering, they're invitations in a way. And I think there's an immense things that can be done with them. Okay, let's scoot on. Quick bit of uh, theory behind the creative labs. I talked about that need for opening up and thinking differently. Um, just click through very quickly. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, stop. Um, the whole idea of uh, using the labs as a space and a time where people could get together and actually step out of their work, their busy working environments, their day-to-day -day environments, quite tricky to do, and let go of all the things they've been doing. Uh, not arrive with projects that they want to carry forward straight away, but actually just arrive open-minded and allow ideas to emerge out of the process. This was the key thing. So this U was a kind of a journey that we, we all went on from letting go at the beginning to arriving at concepts that we wanted to prototype and take further forward. Um, so that's the, the theory behind it, and I'm kind of conscious of time. So let's move on a bit more and look at, at it in practice. Um, maybe move on again. So um, we had 10 participants in each lab, all from the creative sector. We had seven lab sessions, um, which were all one-day sessions, and took us around that U and we all arrived with a clean slate, starting from scratch. Um, we had the time, we had the space, and we had the assistance of one another, talking to one another, sharing ideas and thinking. That was the key ingredients. The first four sessions were all about taking stock. Us, here, now, were the three main headings. Us, who are we, the people in this lab? What skills do we bring? What do we know? How can we pull what we know about what's out there? Um, if I actually ask you to move forward again, another slide, uh, we would have been mapping that information and, and again collaborating on how we could share our skills and appreciating the skills that we all had and the knowledge that we all had, which was immense and very rich. Um, move on again, another slide. Um, second step here, going out with as open mind as possible to respond to what we saw around us in fre with fresh eyes. Um, being in the moment, as it were, being mindful, um, responding to the, the things that f f meant something to us each individually and bringing that back and thinking about it. What is it about here and the resources that we have which is special and important and that we could work from? And then, next slide. Um, and what is really happening right now, taking stock of the bigger picture, the trends and patterns that we were all able to bring together and, and how should we respond to that as, as creative people? What can we do with what we have here and who we are to respond to some of those challenges out there? So that was the key thing. And then the second three sessions were really about arriving at those ideas and then helping each other very supportively to develop them, really grasp what are they specifically? Who are we trying to help? Where is it going to happen? What difference is it going to make? Um, how will that contribute to regional development? And that, that sharing was a, was a key part of the process, which was very evident right the way through. And then finally, action planning, you know, to take the concepts further forward. And each person was able to make use of 1,500 euros just to buy any specific bits of equipment, materials, hire a venue, get some training that would help them to take that concept further forward. So ideally, nobody was out of pocket in doing that. Um, and you'll see the results upstairs. We were also able to link with CERC, the, uh, the regional college here, and their image center in Enniskillen and the ideas center in Omer uh, for some technical support as well. And we had a joint session in there of all three labs, uh, which helped us to further progress the concepts. OK, so uh, a number of concepts were tried before arriving at the final one. If you want to click over again. Oh, there was a nice picture of us being creative in creative labs. And that's one of the ones we didn't take forward, but uh, it shows you what the potential is. <laughs> on to the results. Well, you'll see upstairs the number of different concepts. My own take on it from being at the labs and, and listening and, and looking at the different concepts is that they can actually be combined really well. You can see them as individual concepts with an individual person pushing them forward. And in some cases, 
two or three or four people pushing them forward, or you can begin to see how they can connect up. And if there's any local authority people here who want to think strategically, um, getting the people together in a room with some of those concepts and actually working out what that could mean if you added them together would be a really useful exercise. So some of the uh, concepts around reconnecting to the natural resources that we have, really strong theme there. Uh, the Caledonian Range uh, Alternative University, Go Gallivant, Leitrim Big Day Out, Rain Festival, places of mundane beauty, uh, Drop the City, and um, experiential documentary that Johnny Lawson has done, architectural pods um, and bird's eye kites are, are all examples of things which draw you back into the natural resources and environment of this place and help people reconnect to nature at a time where I think that sort of thing is becoming increasingly necessary. And it could add up to a really effective tourism offer if all of those things were knitted together, um, which would give the region a distinct quality uh, in all the other offers that are out there. Other concepts around sharing creativity, as we talked about earlier, trying to get it out, get more people thinking creatively. Um, there's a number of concepts around that. Uh, create a storm, for example, supporting individuals, uh, small businesses in particular, I can see how that would help. Um, supporting communities, arts about you. Um, contagiously creative is another one. Uh, the craft book, uh, make do, and um, uh, what was the other one? Online craft tutorials, all are kind of offering the opportunity to be creative to people in different ways and in different settings. Um, other services are directly addressing sustainability, so Rebound Industries and Local E, which is all about renewable energies, are directly addressing sustainability, and others all help with regeneration, and one of the things, the antidote to globalization and the economic model we have is relocalization, uh, enhancing the, the, the identity of individual places, uh, making them stronger places that can have their own resi resilient economies, and things like um, Projection mapping, design the streets, um, even the, the, the bent green ash bench that you'll see up there, um, and sustainable shelters are all helping to enhance place uh, and make them important self-sustaining places to live as part of relocalization. So there's a number of themes that you can use to understand all those concepts and how either individually they're great, but adding together, they're really starting to offer us some new vision, as it were, as to what things could be like here in the region, what the economy could be like. And I think that's important to look at. Um, as for the labs themselves, I think there might be another slide or two, actually, that I haven't. I forget to click anyway, but I forget to. OK, five minutes, I'm great. So some of the pictures, right, we'll stay there, because that's the last one. Um, as for the labs themselves, you know, some of the learning that we've, we've taken from it, Leo and Oller and myself have been reflecting on our experiences of running this first batch of labs, which were really done on the hoof in many ways. We were working it out as we went along. Um, and there have obviously been some challenges which always arise when you're piloting something like this for the first time, trying to get all the administrative bits to work together with what's happening in the labs. Um, the fact that each person was getting a, a, a resource meant that each person had to apply for that and trying to manage that process was quite a, an enormous um, challenge and Anna-Marie has done magnificently in managing to rise to that challenge and allow everybody to get what they needed uh, to be able to put the concepts together in time for this showcase, which was a tight time scale to, to work against. Um, but it happened and we've, we've learned a lot from it. The next time around, things will happen so much more smoothly and easily. <laughs> the, the things that we really found were working well was how good the working relationships were that would happen within the labs and even between the labs. When we had our, our session of all three labs together, it was very hard to actually pull people out of groups because they were so busy discussing and helping each other think through, for example, how to approach the showcase, how to present the concepts, what sort of messages to be putting across. Um, there was a lot of mutual support in teasing out ideas and problem solving and signposting to other resources. It really demonstrated what's possible. I think there's a couple of concepts up there which are probably building on that idea that um, we can all help each other. It's not about working in competition or on your own. It's, it's actively supporting each other as a good way to move forward. Um, so could it be improved? Yes. Um, obviously, we've got loads of ideas about that could, how that could happen. 
Um, more involvement of wider businesses was envisaged. Um, in the first instance, in designing the labs, that we would bring other businesses in to share in the development of the concepts. Um, we, we can do that better next time. We, we managed it to a degree, but we can certainly think about how to do that better on a second occasion. Possibly even inviting a younger body of people in as well. Um, some recent graduates might be a good energy source for, for the labs. Um, and yeah, just looking at the timing and organization of the sessions, maybe having a residential rather than them all being separate because of that difficulty of coming out of your day-to-day -day life and being creative. Uh, you know, right, start being creative now. You have five hours, five, five hours to do it in, and that's you. Um, but otherwise, yeah, the whole thing has gone very well. And I think um, it's demonstrated, for me anyway, and hopefully for yourselves, that um, the creative sector can show creative leadership of the kind I mentioned at the beginning being necessary. That it can demonstrate alternative visions for what the regional economy could be like. And it can begin to inject creativity into the wider economy and into the communities and small business communities as well. And I would just reiterate to encourage you to actively engage with the ideas that you see up there. Don't just simply look at them and say, very good, yeah. But think, what could I do? Maybe we could work together on this. Maybe this is something we could take further forward. Uh, maybe if a whole group of us got together in a room around shared concepts, we can actually come up with something very compelling for the next rural development program, the next indirect program, um, which will really show what's possible. Okay, so thanks a lot for that.